Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Our electronic devices such as laptops and phones use a DC source to charge the batteries. Hence, in order to do so, the alternating current which is supplied from the mains needs to be converted into direct current. Now, you may ask us to make this change. Well, the AC has an alternating waveform. Such a waveform cannot be used to store charges. Hence, it is necessary to convert the incoming alternating current into a direct current with a constant amplitude so that the batteries can be charged. This brings us to our next question. How do we do this? Well, this is done with the help of rectifiers. The rectifier is a circuit that converts alternating current into direct current. Rectifiers are essentially of two types, half-wave rectifiers and full-wave rectifiers. Let's first look into the half-wave rectifier. The half-wave rectifier circuit consists of a step-down transformer. A step-down transformer is a device that lowers the incoming voltage. The diode is connected in series with the resistor and the output is taken across the resistor load. The circuit is supplied with an alternating current. Now, we know that a diode conducts only when forward biased. Thus, when the positive half of the waveform passes through the diode, point A is at a higher potential than point B. The diode is forward biased and the current flows through it. Conversely, during the second half of the cycle, point A is now at a lower potential than point B. Here, the diode is reverse biased and we get no output. Thus, we get an output current in one direction. Even though half-wave rectifiers serve the purpose of converting the AC current to DC, it wasted a good amount of electricity as only one half of the input got converted to output. Thus, alternatively, to avoid this, we use the full wave rectifier. The full wave rectifier is of two types, center tapped rectifier and bridge rectifier. In a center tapped rectifier, the load is connected at the center of the transformer, which is considered the ground point or the zero voltage point of the transformer. Two diodes are connected at either end of the transformer. Let's name the two points A and B. Now, when the positive half of the AC current passes through the transformer, point A is at a higher potential than point B. This makes the diode at point A to be forward biased, and hence the current flows through diode 1. The second diode is at a lower potential than diode 1, and hence it acts as an open switch and no current flows through it. During the second half of the AC input, point B is at a higher potential than point Point A. Here, diode 1 acts as an open switch and thus current flows from diode 2. Thus, both the halves of the AC current are passed through the diodes respectively. Thus, we get direct current as the output. Now, we come to our second type of full-wave rectifier, the bridge rectifier. As the name suggests, the circuit of this rectifier is in the form of a bridge. It uses four diodes. While connecting a bridge rectifier, we need to keep in mind that the two anodes are connected at one point and two cathodes are connected at the other two ends. The diodes working as alternative pairs being forward and reverse biased. Let's name the diodes as D1, D2, D3 and D4. Now, when the positive half of the cycle is passed through the circuit, point A being at a higher potential than point B, the current flows from point A to diode D2 and then to diode D4 as the two diodes are forward biased. Diode D1 and D3 are reverse biased and acts as open switches, allowing no current to pass through them. In the second half of the cycle, point B is at a higher potential than point A. Hence, here the current flows in the opposite direction. Here diodes D3 and D1 are forward biased and thus current flows through these diodes. Diodes D2 and D4 are reverse biased and act as open switches for the second half of the AC wave, thus allowing only the second half of the AC current to flow through D4 and D1 and we get a non-alternating or a DC output. Now, you may wonder why we use four diodes when the same output can be achieved with two diodes. Well, that is because the bridge rectifier is capable of bearing with higher peak inverse voltage than the center tapped transformer. Peak inverse voltage is the highest negative voltage that a rectifier needs to block. Using a bridge rectifier, the chances of the diode being damaged due to the reverse biased current is lowered. The output obtained, however, is not truly DC in nature. This is because its voltage is varying. In order to get a constant output voltage, we use a filter circuit. The filter circuit is obtained by connecting a capacitor across the load. The charging and discharging nature of the capacitor helps us in getting the output voltage. Once the circuit attains its peak voltage, the diode is charged. Then, during the time the diode reverses, the capacitor gets discharged and thus charges back again. This way, we get an output that is almost DC in nature. Well, that's all about half-wave and full-wave rectifiers and how they convert the alternating current to direct current. We'll see you in the next video with more interesting content. Until then, bye!